Good morning, CSL Carlsbad and Facebook Live followers. My name is Reverend Lori Mack, and it is my honor to be here this morning with you, to serve you, and to give you this morning's message on behalf of the Carlsbad Centers for Spiritual Living. So before we start, why don't we do what we'd love to do most here, and that's pray. So I invite you to close your eyes and to go within as I recognize that one infinite divine source that's always expressing itself through all and as all. I know there is a creative expression of spirit that continues to create itself in many different beautiful forms. And I am grateful for this, for I know this creative spirit lives and moves and has its beingness within me right here and right now. As I know this is my perfect truth, I know that each and every person here Listening to this message this morning is a unique, individualized expression of God, expressing their true essence of who they are out into the world today. And I am grateful for, for this, knowing that we are on this evolutionary expression, experience, individually and collectively together in the world. And I just know that whatever needs to be heard today will be heard, and whatever needs to be seen will be seen. I know there is an evolutionary process moving through each and every person's mind, their heart, their body, their soul, to be a true spiritual being in the world, to be in the world but not of the world. And I'm grateful for this divine truth as I release my word into the law, knowing that it is good, knowing that it is done, and so it is. Ah, good morning. It is July 19th and I'm still talking to myself at home on Sunday morning. <laughs> so that means we're still in quarantine and boy, do I miss you. And if you are listening, so make sure you give me some love, give me some hearts or smiles, uh, leave a little message down below. It's just nice to know that you're here and I, I'll just have to laugh at my own jokes if I make any today. I'm not sure if I will. So it's just wonderful to be with you. Um, I know that we're progressing though. That's the whole thing. It's just there's so many beautiful things going on in the world, even though it looks terrible. Uh, there is a lot of harp heart opening happening on a humanity level. Of course, I always go to my favorite website, which is coronavirus. Oh, I see a couple of hearts flying up in the air. Thank you. Coronavirus.org. And that is uh, in Sanskrit, love and compassion. And this, these are uh, compassionate acts that are being done all around the world. I mean, not just in the United States, but everywhere. And so You'll never believe it. Encinitas was on that website this week and it was so exciting to me. I guess uh, the surfers all got together. They took the surfboards and they spelled out unity. And of course, people took pictures of it from above and posted it online. And then they gave like eight minutes of reverence and silence for George Floyd. And then they paddled out to the ocean in honor of Black Lives Matter. And I thought that was just a beautiful recognition that hearts are opening and humanity is coming together as one and we're no longer feeling that sense of separation that um, because we are evolving spiritually that we're demanding this to be the way of our world today. And there was another uh, article on the website. I loved this, this was amazing. Asheville City Council has apologized for the North Carolina city's historic role in slavery, discrimination, and denial of basic liberties to black residents and voted to provide reparations to them and their descendants. Wow, that's big. <laughs> that's just beautiful because it tells me that we are living life and that we are waking up on a human level and also on a individual level because we are here to transcend our personality and we are here to really live from that true essence that lives within us because there is a seed of divinity that's planted within us but it's planted within each and every person on this planet and each and every animal each and everything has a seed of divinity into it and we might call this like the christ within or or the Atman, the Buddha nature, or the God self. It all depends on the spiritual um, tradition that you are following. But it's all the same. It is that essence, that true essence. In religious science, we call it the essence within us. And when we commit to the 
art and the practice of, of waking up, we move into the realization of that is the truth of our being and the truth of everyone else in the world. Because there are two aspects of us. One is the personality and one is the essence. Now our personality was pretty much formed before we were five years old. We came in with our little personalities and then whatever happened in our family dynamics and how we had to survive we formed our personalities and then whatever people told us about the world and who we were in the world we believed and that's okay that's just the way it works in our human life and then we went out into the world and we started living mechanically because everything was planted in us early and so our subconscious mind took over and we mechanically have beliefs and thoughts and processes that we express out into the world not only that but we also identify with our bodies we think that we are our bodies and this is when we are not awake in life we think okay this is who i am this is my body i am my body and i can tell you for sure that i was definitely asleep for many many years and thought i was my body and rightfully so uh, being a professional dancer my body was my instrument so i thought that i was my body <laughs> and and but one time i had these little awakenings along my travels and i was in college uh and we were in the dance class we're all looking in the mirror the teacher was teaching the steps and all of a sudden I had an out-of-body out experience I was up above the room looking at everybody in the room and I was in the room too and then I was in my body and I was looking at the person in the mirror that I was looking at and I didn't recognize her of course that was me and when I came back I was like oh my god I didn't even know who I was for a minute there and I just saw everybody in the room from way above so it was just a glimpse of the universe telling me that you know you are not your body and you are more than who you are um, and so these are the these are the situations that happen to us when we become aware that we are not our personality that there is an essence that is deep within us that is so much more than what we portray to the world and it is through our observation uh, that we recognize who we are and it's the awareness that we move into different levels of consciousness of awareness to express our true self and to allow that personality to be broken and to realize that we are not the body we are not the personality we are the divine essence you know a great analogy would be a chicken there's an egg and in it is protecting the embryo and then when the egg cracks the divine essence comes out the chicken comes out of the egg so for us it's like our ego is protecting us at all times you know our ego does not want us to wake up like if you're one of those people that say I can't meditate because I fall asleep well it's because your ego doesn't want you to meditate <laughs> your ego wants you to stay asleep but so our ego kind of is the shell but something happens in our life and our heart cracks open and all of a sudden boom you know our true essence comes flying out and we realize that we are more than our personality and it really is a beautiful experience when that happens because we all have free choice we all can choose to move into a higher level of beingness um, we don't have to be the way we are our whole life of course we're going to be asleep because that's how we grew up asleep but one day we just like whew, just wake up to who we are um, there was an amazing story on the coronavirus.org and it was about a man his name was chris buckley yeah and he was actually ahead of the kkk for many many years and then he went into the army for 12 years and he was in afghanistan and he became anti-muslim and then when he came back to the united states he got married and had a couple kids but there was just hate just streaming through his veins and his wife was very very concerned for her two children so she introduced her husband to a man who was a Nazi skinhead turned Buddhist <laughs> yes and this gentleman this Buddhist took Chris Buckley on a compassion tour he took him to all the homeless shelters in the area and took him to all the gang rehab centers in the area and Chris had an experience where he was speaking to an African-American woman who was I think the cook in one of the rehab centers and by the end of the conversation he was sobbing in her in her arms and he was 
just apologizing for the way that he had acted in the past. It's like his heart completely cracked open and the true essence of who he was just shone through. And matter of fact, one of his best friends today is a Muslim and uh, every year he practices Ramadan with him and his friend and their family. And today he is also a parent, a parent for peace and for change and he works with children because he came from a very rough neighborhood in Ohio and that's why he had so much hate inside his blood. He works with children who've had a lot of trauma and a lot of hate in their life to transform them into um, compassionate human beings. So now he's doing great work in the world and it's just truly a beautiful story of, of his evolutionary process. And so I have this uh, beautiful prayer here that was written by Tom Sander, and I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and just listen to these words. I open myself to the mystery of life. I know I am more than my body, more than my emotions, more than my thoughts. Beyond all this is my essence, my true nature as a spiritual being. I now open myself to the mystery of my essence. I decide to wake up. The reactionary thoughts and feelings of my personality no longer control me. I have the ability to observe myself and monitor my thoughts. I balance the energies of my body. I find out about my strengths and my weaknesses, and I fully participate in life. I am not alone. The presence and power of the universe is behind me, supporting me, loving me all the way. I open myself to the mystery of life, to the mystery of my essence. I am at home. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so we are really here to wake up and to consciously be in the present moment and to know that we are more than our personality. We are more than our ego. We are more than our body. There is something that's greater within us, a divinity that I have within me, that you have within you, <clears throat> that's seeking to have a bigger expression out into the world. And you see, there's many levels of awareness. Um, even a rock has a level of livingness, of awareness. A plant has a level of awareness in it. And animals have great levels of awareness, but of course, <clears throat> humans have the highest level of awareness. <clears throat> and the highest level would be the cosmic consciousness where you recognize that you are individual, but yet you are universal, that you are yet one with all of life. But it is through these levels of awareness that we can spiritually expand and we can spiritually grow. And I just want to share with you uh, four levels of awareness. And I loved this tool as a tool for myself when I started my spiritual journey. because so I was always asking myself, okay, what kingdom of consciousness am I in right here and right now? So this is called the kingdom of consciousnesses. And we move through these kingdoms all day long, but eventually we move into the higher kingdoms on a regular basis. So the first kingdom of consciousness is uh, the mechanical level. Well, we're aware that we are individuals and we are self-conscious, but we don't realize that we co-create a reality. We have no idea that we have any power in the world. Uh, we, we don't even recognize our subconscious mind and that our subconscious mind is mechanical and is basically running of, uh, our lives. We feel that we are victims of circumstances and um, we feel that everything happens to us. Like I have no matter in the choice, I'm in a situation and life happens to me. So this is called the victim consciousness. And we all go there, you know, someone cuts you off and when you're driving all of a sudden, and then you're in victim consciousness. <laughs> someone did something to me. So when we move out of shame, blame and regret is when we move into a higher level of consciousness. And this is the second kingdom of consciousness. And we might call this the discovery level. And here we recognize that uh, we are self-conscious and we begin to realize there's a relationship between what I'm thinking and what is out picturing in the world in my, in my life. We have, an, we have an understanding of the word creative and we're still operating at the level of the personality, at the ego. 
and uh, we feel like it's our will, not God's will. And then this is a really good you know, place to be because you're the great manifester. So you can manifest a lot of things in life. I am the great manifester of life. The only thing is you don't realize, and I learned this the hard way, that you will keep hitting your head up against the wall over and over and over because you think you're, you control how you get things done. And when you do that, you can only go so far. But when you give up this control, okay, then all of a sudden spirit comes in. But most people don't want to give up that control. So this is everything is done by me. I am the great manifester. My thoughts create my reality. It is my will, not God's will or anybody else's will at that hand. So you are conscious, but you're still asleep. And that is the second kingdom of consciousness. And you always know kind of where you're at in life when you look at these different kingdoms. And now the third kingdom is really a fabulous kingdom. This is when you have your, your spiritual awakening, when you realize that you're um, kind of like one with all of life and you, you're, you're unified with all of life and you're, you're willing to give up that personality. No one wants to give up the pull of the personality. I am in control. I am, I am the power. But when you give up that pull of the personality, oh my God, what happens is unforeseen good continues to flow in your life. You're like, wow, I couldn't have done that better. I couldn't have orchestrated all those people and all these situations to happen for me to be, get to point A to point B. So when we give up control of how something is going to happen, when we surrender, which is very difficult, all of a sudden you become a vehicle for spirit. You become that, that essence of flowing one with divine. And it's truly a beautiful place to be because you discover the inner wisdom of the universe and you allow it to flow through you. So if you see like many like musicians will allow um, or poets, artists will allow life to flow through them and this is truly a beautiful place to be. And it's exciting to have this like, wow, my biggest spiritual experience, my first spiritual experience of, of surrender and giving up and throwing in the towel because I'm so persistent and consistent and I'm going to get what I want when I want it. When I finally had to give up and throw up the towel, throw in the towels, like spirit just came flying into my life and arranging everything to how it needed to be. So like if you're in the world today and let's say you're out of a job or you're not working, you know, and you're one with, with God and you feel unified with God and you ask that question like what do I do right now how do I work how do I make an income and you just kind of give up the control it's like you will have the answers will come to you and you will move into inspired action and it, it, it's just it's really a magical place to be and then the fourth kingdom of consciousness is recognizing that um, you're one with all of life. Now you're in the cosmic illumination. There is no separation. So to go from three to four, uh, from uh, surrendering, you have to get into three. And to get into four, you have to um, give up separation between you and God, you and anyone else. You like are one with the world. You are one with the essence of life. And this is where some artists and poets and philosophers tap into this create a level of being one with all of life. And this is when you wake up and you have that glimpse of the fourth state. Now, I think that when I was a professional dancer, the reason why I danced for so many years is because when I was dancing, I was in that bliss, that divine bliss of being one with God. But then when I wasn't dancing, I was down in level one where my lower personality, well, I didn't think I was enough and I had low self-esteem and I, you know, it was heck dealing with myself for so many years. But when you, when I was one with God, it was like, oh my God, life was so good. And, um, you know, there was a great story, I noticed a great story on the coronavirus.org about a Chinese man that got into a car accident. And after the car accident, he had deep, deep depression. And he couldn't fall asleep unless he had a lot of people in the room and he felt really safe. And then he would wake up in the middle of the night and start, start to wander. And his wife started to get worried about him. So the wife taught him this Chinese shuffle, <laughs> a shuffle dance. And uh, they were farmers, so they would shuffle dance out in the cornfields, and they would shuffle dance by the cows, and they would shuffle dance in front of the barn. And then they were in quarantine, so their kids wanted to learn how to shuffle dance, so they taught their kids how to shuffle dance, and then they started videoing it, and then it, it went viral. They had 1.8 million views, and now her husband no longer has this 
depression and he really was lifted from kingdom one okay of this lower personality to kingdom four and he just feels elated uh, I sent out a, a, a email blast so if you got my email blast I put that little video on there and it's really adorable it's super cute so here we are, and we are, we're here to awaken and to become aware of where we are in life so we can move uh, through the world through our divine essence and not of our ego personality. And we do this by just kind of letting go and letting God and just go with the flow. And kind of that's kind of what we have to do right now during the quarantine. We have to let go. We have to let God. And we have to move with the flow. And if you're having any kind of problems financially or any other, um, just ask that question. What, it is, what is it do I need to do? And go within. Use your inner wisdom to guide you and direct you because you will get answers. You'll get the phone call. Someone will tell you something. And it, it will really uh, put you in the place where you need to be because now you're unified with all of life when you move from this place of pure essence. So in really to be successful in spiritual living is to recognize that you are in the world, but you're not of the world. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going on on the outside world, but um, that doesn't mean that is who you are, that um, you can stay in this inner wisdom place and recognize that you're always divinely guided and you're always protected at all times. So just know that you're protected and we're going to get through this. It might take a long time. It might take a short time. We don't know, but really keep up. Um, a high vision for the universe and for yourself and while you're in this place of quarantine you're doing your inner work remember you don't want to drag the past into the present moment whatever has to be forgiven in the past just just forgive it and learn your lesson and move forward because what happens is that when you drag the past into the present you're contaminating your life and you're contaminating your consciousness because now you're into that blame shame and regret that victim stage that first stage of consciousness and the only way to move into the second stage is to give up the blame shame and the regret and to forgive and to move forward um, and another beautiful story on the coronavirus.org is about a woman who um, before she passed which she just recently passed she was a holocaust survivor and she forgave the nazis uh, there's a beautiful animated film on that website about her. It's a powerful story about her and she was taken away from uh, her family was transported and then her and her twin sister, nine years old, were drug away from her mother. They looked back, her mother was screaming and crying and her family went to the gas chamber and her and her sister became human guinea pigs. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible experiments were, were uh, horrific experiments were, were uh, put upon them. And they did get away. And years later, um, her sister died because of the experiments that, were, that, that was done on her. And she just lived this life of always thinking about her family being drug away from her and how they went through this terrible experience. And she realized that she had to forgive. So she wrote a letter to the doctor because he was still alive and asked him to meet her in Auschwitz where this took place. And she wrote a letter saying, I forgive you. And not only did that break, this was, you know, this is volition. This is your free choice. Not only did it break the chains that she had within her wrist, it also break the chains that he had because he had to live with himself for so many years because he did that. And, um, and then they made this video and, you know, like a year later she, she had passed away, but it's beautiful that she was really able to resolve this. So here we are, we are here to wake up and we are here to observe ourselves and to move constructively through these kingdoms of consciousness and just to be easy on ourselves when we are going through these spiritual growth that you don't have to beat yourself up or judge yourself. Just like, you know, I'm, a, I'm on this path, I'm growing, I'm, I'm expanding. Uh, it's all happening easily and effortlessly in divine timing and just loving ourselves. Uh, why are we are in quarantine and loving everyone around us so send love send love to your neighbors send love to your friends your families forgive forgive yourself move out of shame blame and regret and uh, go into the manifestation stage my will be the manifester of your life and then you know surrender surrender to the greater good get into the third kingdom of consciousness of course pray and meditate every day and live in that fourth kingdom where your divine essence is always shining so today I'm going to do a prayer. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And what I'll do is I'll say a sentence and then you just repeat that sentence to yourself. Here we go. I am committed to my spiritual growth. 
I am a spiritual energy floating in the sea of universal energy. I am committed to allowing the free flow of energy to move unimpended through me. I open my head energies to light. I open my heart energies to love. I open my action energies to power. I am committed to my spiritual growth. I understand who I am and where I am going. Boldly, I step out into the full manifestation of my life. With enthusiasm, courage, and conviction, knowing that I am assisted by my spiritual source in everything I do. I am committed to my spiritual growth and I begin now. My soul calls me to freedom and I heed the call. All right, divine beings, I love you. Be safe. And I'll see you next month.